about all the animals and plants in the sea. But before we get started, repeat after me. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. One, two, three, four. Hail, hail, we're aqua tots. We are going to have a fantastic day of learning about all things fish here at Aquatots. Earlier this summer, we learned that some animals may be called a fish, but they're not really a fish, like the jellyfish or the starfish. We call them jellies and sea stars. So to start us off today, Mr. Tom is here with a song all about strange fish names. Let's get ready. Hey everybody, so there are so many animals and they have so many names and sometimes those names are awesome and sometimes it's like, why did you name that animal that? This is a song all about that. Also, not a knife. <laughs> oh, names, names, what's in a name? Some names are great and others are strange. Some animals aren't what their names They are less all pain than they mean. Oh, that's a shrimp, it's not a mantis or a shrimp. Are you with me so far? Starfish should be called sea stars because that's simply what they are. A dogfish, not a dog, but a shark. Or a horseshoe. Oh, names, names, what's in a name? Some names are great and others are strange. Some animals aren't what they think. They more or less open. Thinking, oh, sea lions and lionfish. Here's a new splash. They're not lions. Your shark can't practice medicine and probably shouldn't be trying. Mermaid's purse is just an egg case for a shark and much too small to be practical. And an orange rough is really red and never ever rough. It's actually quite a mild fish with a sweet flavor, very flaky and popular in many cuisines around the planet. I'm hungry. Oh, names, names, what's in a name? in the ocean with strange or confusing names. Now, Mr. Josh is here with a story. Listen closely and see if you hear any of the animals that Mr. Tom mentioned in the story today. Hi everyone. Today we're gonna read A Wish for a Fish, All About Sea Creatures by Bonnie Worth. I'm the cat in the hat, and I hear that you wish to go down to the sea and to visit the fish. So please climb on board, SS Undersea Glubber. It is made out of shark skin and very fine rubber. It will take us down deep, deep down under the sea. We will start at the top and go as deep as can be. The top parts are sunny, the bottom parts are black. We'll go to the bottom and then we'll come back. Sunny zone, twilight zone, Dark zone, abyss, the trench at the bottom you won't want to miss. The sunny zone is where our sea visit starts. Most of sea life is found in these parts. 
The law of the sea is the same as the land. I'll call it the food chain, so you'll understand. Big fish eat smaller fish, and so until you get down to one of the tiniest, krill. If you're wishing for fish, there's lots of them here. I see herring and mackerel swimming quite near. Fish can lay eggs, they have fins and fish tails, and most fish have bodies all covered with scales. These scales, they are coated with slippery slime. The slime keeps out the germs, at least most of the time. Fish open their mouths and they let water in. That's when the gill's job really starts to kick in. Gills sift through the water and pull out the air. They help the fish find all the air that is there. But oxygen, really. The jellyfish is a most interesting fella. He looks kind of like a transparent umbrella. Stay away from his tentacles, those long stringy things. They stun prey by giving off hundreds of stings. Of the hundreds of kinds of sharks in the sea, we only have time now to visit three. The six inch long dogfish. No, it never barks. The 50 foot whale shark, the mat truck of sharks. And what have we here? Let's find out. It is called the great white for its white belly, great teeth, and great big deep bite. A shark grows its teeth in neat rows in its face. When the front row wears out, the next row takes its place. Shark bodies are made of the same kind of stuff as your ears and your nose. That's what makes them so tough. The stuff is called cartilage. It folds and it bends. And when it is torn, the cartilage mends. You guys can take a moment, feel your ears, feel the top of your nose. That's cartilage. It's pretty cool. What else can you see in this nice sunny water? Oh, say, see the manatee and her calf daughter. Manatees are mammals like you and like me. They have lungs and give milk to their babies, you see. Another sea mammal we'll see is the whale. It's the largest of the mammals we'll see without fail. Their great whale family is split into two. Toothed whales, like the orca, and baleen, like the blue. Baleen fills the blue whale's mouth like a grill. As water flows through it, it strains out the krill. The blue whale weighs tons, maybe 90 or more, it's bigger than even a big dinosaur. The tooth whales are orcas and few can defeat them. They like to hunt seals and to catch them and eat them. The narwhal's one tusk sticks, sticks out like a horn. It looks so much like a one horn unicorn. All whales hold their breath when they dive down below and when they come up, let it out with a big blow. Before we go deeper, let's all wave hello to our mammal pals, dolphins. That's when, that's them down below. A dolphin can see in the night, wonder why? Echolocation, it works like an eye. It sends out a click and the click bounces back. And the sound of that click helps the dolphin keep track of where it is going and which fish is where and whether some foe like a shark might be there. Shake hands with the octopus. Isn't it great? With arm after arm, just for hugging. Yikes, eight. 
Dear Dick and Sweet Sally, tell me what you would think if I told you the octopus shoots out a dark ink. It squirts out the ink in some enemy's face and then swims away to a much safer place. Now we're in the Twilight Zone. Of all the fights that are fought in the sea, there's one that is biggest, if you're asking me. Do I hear you asking? I'm so glad you did. It's the sperm whale versus giant squid. Like all whales, the sperm whale must come up for air, but this one can dive and then stay way down there. For two hours or more, at 3,000 feet, shopping for giant squid to eat. And now we're in the dark zone. Get out your flashlights. It's dark way down here. And the fish are beginning to look very queer. The gigantura and the big mouth deal. The whip nose, which comes with its own rod and reel. Down here it is always as black as the night. So many fish here have their very own light. They use it to locate a mate or some prey. Food hunting is hard like this day after day. And now we're in the abyss. You won't find many creatures in this deep cold sea. Sea cucumber, sea spider, and tripod are three. The abyss has a carpet of thick, yucky muck. Animals have legs, so they will not get stuck. And now we're in the trench. Before we go up, it is really a must that you visit the vents, which are cracks in the earth's crust. It is up through these vents that the hot water spouts and warm up these clams and these worms here about. Giant clams and two worms have enough things to eat because this deep spot has unusual heat. Oh say can you see by my undersea clock, it is time the fair glubber go back to the dock. And now that our trip below the sea is all done, I will bet that you two have a wish for some... What do we have a wish for? Let's find out. Some sun. And there's our story, my friends. Have a great day. I heard several animals in the song and in the book. One I heard was the whale shark. Another one was the jellyfish, or as we said, the jellies. I wish we could explore the ocean and the submarine. But instead, we are going to make our very own portholes and pretend that we're looking out into the ocean with our craft today. So get ready to use your imagination with Miss Gift as we draw what we like to see as we explore the ocean. Hi friends, thanks for joining me for a craft. If you remember the story that Josh read, Wish for a Fish, we're going to be making little portholes that look into the ocean and we're going to draw what we want to see. So first off, we're going to find a paper plate and we're going to cut a circle out of it. And we've already done that. And then we're going to decorate it on the other side and we're going to use some crayons or markers. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate it. And then when you're finished, it's going to look something like this, or you can make it look however you'd like. The next thing we're going to need is a sheet of blue paper. And this is going to be our water and where we're going to draw our fishes in. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out real quick. And then after we get our circle cut out, it's going to look like this. So now the, is the fun part. We're going to draw what we want to see in our porthole. So I'm drawing a sea anemone because I really like sea anemones. I'm going to draw a little fish that's swimming next to it. So 
I know that sea anemones have lots of tentacles. I want to make sure that my sea anemone has a bunch of tentacles. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my little fish. Now you can draw anything in your porthole. Maybe you can draw a shark, or you can draw a sea star. I'm going to draw a little blue fish. And then, after you're done drawing your fishes, we're going to stick it behind our porthole like this, and then glue it. Perfect. And after it's glued, you can actually stick it onto your wall and it'll look like you're in a submarine looking outside the window. Thanks, friends. It was hard to decide what animals to draw. There are so many animals and fish that I would want to see if I was out exploring. Scientists say that we still have so many more types of animals to discover. Another way that scientists explore the ocean is scuba diving, and Miss Lauren is ready to show us how people explore the ocean and can breathe underwater when they are scuba diving. Hi Aquatots, my name is Lauren. I'm an instructor here at the Florida Aquarium, and today we are going to be looking at how people can swim underwater. So we know that fish have gills and they breathe in the water, right? But us as people, we need to breathe air. We can't be underwater for a long time unless we have some really special equipment that we are going to see today. So the number one thing when you want to go scuba diving underwater, you can stay underwater for really a long time. The first thing that you need to have is something that you can use to breathe with underwater, right? Because remember, we have to breathe air. The way that people breathe air underwater is by having this contraption hooked up. So this is called a scuba tank. And the tank holds air that we breathe. And the air will come through this hose into a mouthpiece right here called a regulator. That's a big fancy word. The regulator helps us to breathe the air coming from the tank and we can breathe it here. So we can stay underwater for really long amounts of time when we have that air in that scuba tank. We also need a couple other things in order to swim underwater. If we were underwater for too long, we would get really cold. Sometimes it's really cold underwater. So we have to have this fancy outfit when we go scuba diving. That is called a wetsuit. And the wetsuit helps keep your body heat in close to your body and it doesn't escape out in the water so you don't get cold as easily. We also need a way to swim fast, right? So our fish have fins and that's how they can move through the water really fast. People, we only have feet, so we need a way to move through the water to swim, kind of like a fish does. And the way we do that is by having these funny looking shoes on when we go scuba diving, those are called fins. Some people call them flippers too. Those flippers will catch more water and you'll kick your legs like this and you'll go a lot faster when you're swimming underwater. Sometimes you also need a couple of other things when you go diving. Um, you need to be able to see, right? If we try to open our eyes underwater, everything is super blurry. That wouldn't be very helpful. When we go diving, we need to wear a mask. It's just like goggles, so you're able to see underwater. Sometimes you can also bring a dive light if it's going to be dark where you're diving or you'll want to look into little holes or crevices to find animals. That is what you're going to need. And that pretty much is what you need to go scuba diving. I hope you learned something. We've heard all about exploring the ocean today and Miss Gift has cleaned up the craft and is ready with another story. Let's head on over. 
Hi friends, today we're gonna to be reading a story called This Is Not My Hat by John Classen. This is not mine, I just stole it. I stole it from a big fish and he was asleep when I did it. And he probably won't wake up for a long time. Uh-oh, his eyes opened. And even if he does wake up, he probably won't notice that it's gone. Hmm. And even if he does notice that it's gone, he probably won't know it was me who took it. And even if he does guess it was me, he won't know where I'm going. But I will tell you where I'm going. I was going where the plants grow, big and tall and close together. It's very hard to see me in there. Nobody will ever find me. There is someone who saw me already but he said he wouldn't tell anyone which way I went. So I am not worried about that. Uh-oh. I know it's wrong to steal a hat. I know it does not belong to me, but I'm going to keep it. It was too small for him anyway, and it fits me just right. And look, I made it, where the plants are big and tall and close together. I knew I was going to make it. Nobody will ever find me. Very far in there. Where's the big fish going? We see the crab again. Oh, it looks like he found the hat. Do you think he found the fish with the hat that stole his hat? I think so. Thanks for swimming by, friends. We've had so much fun exploring and learning about our wonderful blue planet all summer. We hope to see some of our friends here at the Florida Aquarium for Aquatots this fall. To finish out today, and for all of your hard work, Mr. Tom has stopped by with a very special song. Bye, friends. Hey, boys and girls. Let me ask you a question. If you ever had a grown-up or a teacher ask you to do something and you think, I can't do that, I'm too little, or I'm too scared, or whatever it might be, that you say you can't do it, well, let me tell you what. I have an animal friend called the pelican, and they have a very positive attitude. They think they can do things. Let me tell you a little bit about the pelican. The pelican is a very large bird that lives by the ocean as I am sure you've heard. They'll float on the wind for hours and hours, looking for a fish to devour. Then the moment comes when they have to dive. There's no doubt in their mind that they will survive. If they didn't believe in themselves, they'd be stuck on the shore picking shells. Their beak 
a little crooked bill that makes the water weak. And when they dive and hit that water hard, they've got a cushion like an airbag inside of your car. But their greatest secret is a lack of fear, cause they work real hard year after year. All they learn to lose what they've got, to find success in the tightest of spots. They do great things cause they believe in themselves And you better know we believe in you as well So listen close and understand Don't be a pelican, be a pelican Set your mind to it and work real hard With a good attitude, you'll go far Decide what you want and then make a plan Don't be a pelican be a pelican. Listen to this next part and then you can sing it with me. Oh, 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 oh. Be a pelican, be a pelican. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Be a pelican, be a pelican. One more time. Oh, 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 oh. Be a pelican, be a pelican. No. a pelican. All right, so remember, next time your teacher or grown-up asks you, you say, I can't do it, be a pelican and say you can't. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi, friends. Welcome back. My name is Miss Andy, and we are so excited to see you again for our weekly in-person sessions. We will be making sure you and your aqua tots stay safe as we explore our blue planet. This year, we are excited to showcase a variety of new programs with themes that help develop those important pre-K and kindergarten readiness skills. Visit flaquarium.org forward slash education for more information regarding our in-person and virtual program. Well, my friends, that was quite a day. We had a lot of fun along the way. Even though the day is over, we don't say goodbye. We just say see you later till we hang out next time. See you later. See you later. See you later. See you later. One, two, three, four. Hey oh, hey oh, we're aqua tots. Hey oh, hey oh, we're aqua tots. Hey oh, hey oh, we're aqua tots. Hey.